All right, I've even simplified this more. Like I've made this so simple now, it can't get any simpler than this. I mean, seriously, this is going to be so freaking simple now to understand. So we know that the human body is made up of fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones, and minerals. And we know you have to have a certain amount of bacteria in your body. You're always going to be exposed to viruses. And it is medically necessary to get vaccines if the body has a hard time adapting to its environment. And so, and so... We have to understand what antibiotics are. We have to understand what antibodies are. We have to understand then what the body needs to balance everything out. And so antibodies is a balancing force that balances out the, if you have too much pro, too much fatty acid, too much amino acid, too many minerals or too much bacteria that the body is too weak to, I would say, um, to fight against. Because if you have a weakness and you are missing, and you're malnourished with, from malnutrition, infection sets in, and then the body's defense mechanisms are the antibodies that go after, okay, that go after those um those excess bacteria because you can never get away from bacteria you can never get away from minerals you can never get away from viruses you can never get away from nutrition okay so when you hear about antibiotics you think it's like one set of a conglomeration of elements no antibiotic is when somebody already has imbalances and so a set of um fatty acid amino acids pro hormones and minerals and bacteria and viruses will then trigger and create an antibiotic effect, which then suppresses the immune system and stops the healing process, interrupts the body's homeostasis and, um, and stops the healing process and then thus stops the symptoms. It stops the inflammation, okay? Inflammation is when the body is reacting, it's an immune response to an imbalance in its environment and then it produces antibodies to try to keep the balance. But what happens is, is that people are so weak and they have so much infection and they're bringing in um, fatty acids, amino acids, prohormones and minerals that then create more antibodies because they already have sustained imbalances. And that's where the aging process is, is that you have an accumulation of antibodies that's steadily you know, tearing your body down. And that's when you see then uh, manifestations of cancer disease, sepsis, chronic illness, autoimmunity, aging. So I'm gonna read this to you. When you have imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones, and minerals, you create antibodies of which then triggers a chain reaction of diagnosis that will manifest in sepsis. Sepsis is when you have so many white blood cells that produce very quickly and you don't have enough minerals in your body to balance it out. And so then sepsis can take down someone who is very weak, shuts down vital organs. And those that have diabetes, those that have chronic conditions and who are immunocompromised, who are elderly, who are also aged, okay, elderly, and who are young could potentially succumb to sepsis because there's so many predispositions, okay? So then, so then when you have mineral imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones and minerals, you create antibodies of which then triggers a chain reaction of diagnoses that will manifest in sepsis, cancer, okay? So what is cancer? Cancer is when you have so much weakness in your body and the viruses start, well, the viruses um, multiply and multiply um, when they inject their, they inject their DNA into the cells and reprogram it, and then they reproduce, okay? That's what cancer is, okay? Is when you have so many of those, uh, those anomalies, those anomalous cells reproducing and they are then sending mixed messages to the rest of your body, causing then in more imbalances and then misfiring. And then, then that's that recycling back into the universe. That's when the aging process happens even more. So it gets accelerated. So, um, so when you have imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, pro hormones and minerals, 
you create antibodies of which then triggers a chain reaction of diagnoses that will manifest in sepsis, cancer disease, chronic illness, strokes, and heart attacks resulting in death. Well, why would you uh, trigger a stroke and a heart attack? Well, you already have a predisposition of a weak heart and then you know weak uh, blood vessels and a stagnation in your blood supply as far as it moving because you don't have enough electrolytes keeping everything going. And so then you have a buildup of antibodies and other types of antigen, they're not being released and it clogs up as well as fatty acids and it clogs up your arteries. So it's, which then could then trigger a um, uh, cardiomyopathy type of thing, um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it triggers um, strokes or aneurysms where then you know, blood vessels burst because of so much fatty acid that's not able to move. Uh, what else? And heart attacks because you have a stagnation in your blood supply getting to the vital organs because it's so full of plaque and antibodies that are not being released. Okay. So the cures in the holistic allopathic world, all the cures are basically a conglomeration of fatty acids, amino acids, prohormones, and minerals. And then they are applied to the body to stop symptoms. Thus, then the body is producing antibodies, of which then the stagnation of your filtration process then stops the, the, the releasing of the excess antibodies and other antigen in your body that needs to be released. And this is why you see then uh, the steady aging when people are getting all of these different cures, whether it's prescription drugs, whether it's turmeric, whether it's elderberry syrup, whether it's honey, whether it's mucinex, theraflu, um, I don't know, you name it, whatever's in the holistic world as well as in the allopathic world, all of those are conglomerations of fatty acid, amino acids, prohormones, minerals, and bacteria, okay? And then they create imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, prohormones, and minerals because you already have imbalances, which then result in a chain reaction of diagnoses that will manifest in sepsis, cancer, disease, chronic illness, stress, uh, chronic illness, stress and heart attacks, strokes actually, resulting in death, okay? Um, and then someone in my business page was laughing, which they can laugh all they want, but the specific measurable result of why the cures in the prescription drugs, in the holistic world, in the allopathic world, all of that, why it is that they, uh, why they cause more imbalances, the specific measurable results is the fact that people are degrading. So I don't care how much turmeric and honey you apply to a body that already has imbalances, the end result is going to be a systematic degradation based upon your predisposition will be how fast or how slow you accelerate the death process. And so, you know, so how, how I guess, how fast or how slow your death process is relative to what methods you apply to your body regarding cancer disease, chronic illness, aging, sepsis, and all of that. Okay, and so I had to figure out what the hell causes antibody production because people are like, oh, you know, what's antibiotic? Well, yeah, okay, they're like, you know, because why the Gilgis protocol says, okay, watch out for garlic and turmeric and all this. I want to stay away from the spices, why it is a very bland diet on the protocol, and why it must be just the jelly juice and maybe some meat, which is the chicken, and then fresh fruits and vegetables and the J juice and, and, and not too much carbs and not too much sugary stuff, only fruits, is because people have so many acid imbalances and they're so used to turning to holistic stuff like cinnamon and, and, and garlic and cayenne pepper and turmeric and golden paste and all this crap that it causes even continuous more imbalances, more acid imbalances then induce antibodies, okay? And so if we can bring in the right kind of acid, which is the lactic acid, which is the probiotics, coupled with then the cabbage and kale, which is then fermented down to a pre-digested state, coupled with the electrolytes in the pink Himalayan salt. And yeah, you gotta do waterfalls, so you're releasing the excess, you're bringing in and rehydrating your cells with the salt and the electrolytes and the water and then you're bringing the micro and macro nutrition that's actually healing and sealing the holes in your gut so you can actually have the right messages sent to all the right systems in your body and you have to feel pain this is not worth something where you can drug yourself out and think you're going to escape any consequence and that is what's missing in the holistic and allopathic world is they are steadily drugging you guys to a point of where you are building up this antibody 
um, production, accumulation. And then when you have some kind of event, whatever it is, then they, you go to the hospital, get an IV bag, which is basically electrolytes, glucose, to stabilize you. I was watching today um, this movie called The Rainmaker with uh, Matt Damon. And this is about a, an insurance company denying a claim of somebody who passed away and they were trying to get funding for a bone marrow transplant. And the kid who was on his way out the door, I mean, he's like, what, 20 something years old, he was on an IV bag, okay? And he was still on his way out the door. So even an IV bag and electrolytes by itself is not the answer. Even an IV bag with electrolytes and antibiotics is still not the answer because the end result is still death. The end result is still a steadily degradation or an degradation of the body because what's really missing is the synergistic chemistry between uh, the fatty acid, amino acid, prohormones, and minerals, not them separated like they have where everything's compartmentalized in the holistic allopathic world. No, you can't do sole, which is salt water, and then do like a cabbage puree where you're just putting cabbage in a blender and that's it. And no, you can't just you know drink Gatorade or anything. You get all your electrolytes that way or salt water or then drink your little probiotic drink or probiotic pills. No, sorry, that's the wrong chemistry. You're compartmentalizing and there's no chemistry going on where it's bonding together and then working with the intelligence of your body. That's why the Jilly Juice is so amazing is because you're bringing in a synergistic chemical process that is aligned with the biochemistry and it releases the excess antibodies that's being built up because of your imbalances and then the way in which you handle your cancer disease and chronic illness, which is bringing in the wrong elements, causing more imbalances, which then causes more antibody accumulation, of which why then sepsis and heart attacks and strokes are then how people pass away. Okay? So now we finally figured it freaking out. But let me tell you, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to show what precedent was sent, set because when I was watching the Rainmaker and you know the way they won their case was the fact that they found precedents that were set long before but you have to know you do your research to find the precedents that were set so that way they can have evidence admissible but if uh, you don't know your statutes you don't know your you know your case law to find precedents that were set the judge is not going to tell you. It's either he overrules or sustains or you justify why it is that you should submit something in evidence that may seem like it's a stolen evidence, but as long as it wasn't stolen by the lawyer, <laughs> then it was admissible. But they had to find that case law. And that's no different with the whole thing with the judges. You got to find the case law to substantiate this information, okay, which was difficult in the beginning. I had the theory, but I couldn't find the case law to substantiate and back me up but I have since been finding the case law in the biotech. So that way you guys understand where I'm coming from. Okay, so here's an example of an element that could create antibodies. Now, mercury is no different than every other element on the periodic tables. When you have too much of any one element, whether it is mercury, fluoride, cobalt, silver, um, aluminum, I mean, go look at all the periodic table elements, okay, compound elements, elements, so I'm going to give you an example of mercury because I'm not going to go through all 188 or whatever, how many there is, to prove my point. But mercury is an immunotoxic substance that has been shown to induce autoimmune disease in rodent models characterized by lymphoproliferation, overproduction of immunoglobin, and high circulating levels of autoantibodies. Antibodies. When you have too much of any one element and you already have imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones, and minerals, and guess what? Mercury is a mineral. Guess what? Fluoride is a mineral. Guess what? Silver is a mineral. So high circulating level of autoantibodies directed at antigens located in the nucleus. So what's an antigen? When you have an imbalance, because I'm telling you, when somebody gets a vaccine and they're all worried about the thimerosal and the mercury in it, well, you already have predispositions, but not everybody gets adverse reactions to a vaccine, okay? Which means that they don't have an imbalance in their minerals, but someone who may get an adverse reaction to a vaccine that may have something in there, who knows what it is, because correlation doesn't always mean causation. It means that they have an imbalance in one of those components and they already have a predisposition and they already have weaknesses, okay? So anything that is overabundant 
that the body already has imbalances in and then you bring it into the body, it will create antibodies. And when you have too many antibodies in the body, that's when it then it relates and correlates to getting the wrong blood transfusion. When you're O negative, which means you don't have any surface marker antigen in your blood that is detectable, and then you get a wrong blood transfusion, which is A, B positive, surface marker antigen A, surface marker antigen B, plus the RH factor, you would then risk somebody having a complete shutdown of their organs because those antibodies are going to be accumulating very fast because of that antigen. Antigen is basically an overabundance of any one mineral, bacteria, acid, whatever, that the body deems that it, because it's all based upon, it's relative to the individual. One individual can have too many imbalances in their minerals. Another person can have too many imbalances in their fatty acid. Another person can, or have a combination of all three or four, because your body's made up of fatty acid, amino acids, prohormones, and minerals. And if you have imbalances in all four of those, and then you're bringing in foods and medications that induce antibodies, this is why you see systematic degradation. This is why you see cancer. This is why you see heart attacks and strokes. The so people may live the first time, but the second time they may not be so lucky. This is why you see diagnoses. This is why you see people are pushing the vaccines because they know that if a weak person who already has imbalances meets that actual virus in their environment, that very strong virus in their environment, that exposure, which then would cause a very high accelerated amount of antibodies accumulating and then potentially shutting the body down. That's why it's so dangerous for mothers to not get a vaccine and then put their kids in a measles party because they don't know their kid's predisposition. You put a kid in a measles party, guess how many antibodies get created and they don't know to what extent their antibody acquisition is and their accumulation and they could potentially kill their baby, kill their child because that's too many antibodies being produced more than the body can handle. We finally freaking figured it out, okay? And then what is infection? So you know what infection is. What is infection? According to Mayo Clinic, a disease caused by microorganisms that invade tissue. Okay, so when you have too much microorganisms, you're supposed to have a certain amount. But when you have too many and the body isn't balancing out correctly with all of the other minerals and acids and hormones or nutrition, those microorganisms will then invade good tissue. And this is why people then use antibiotics. But if you already have mineral imbalances and you're using antibiotics, yeah, you'll stop for a minute the infection, maybe. But people are becoming immune to antibiotics because there's too much overuse. So you have the, the, the holistic community nixing the prescription drug antibiotics and they're only sticking to they're only sticking to turmeric and honey and, and garlic and all of that and cayenne pepper, okay? And then what's going to happen is the body's become immune to that. It's going to cease working. Inflammation will still happen, but yet you're not bringing in the other minerals to offset the antibody acquisition. Thus, then, you then trigger sepsis, cancer, disease, chronic illness, aging, autoimmunity, and then not surviving strokes and heart attacks. So that's why the jelly juice is so amazing because yes, you're bringing up inflammation because you're healing. That's what inflammation is, it's the body trying to heal. But then what offsets the amount of antibody acquisition is the electrolytes, it's the water, it's the waterfalls, it's the micro and macro nutrition all put together under one drink called the jelly juice. And you have to deal with pain. You can't be drugged the hell out to heal. But that's exactly what the holistic and the allopathic world works on. And yeah, they may buy you a few years relative to how early you catch your disease. But usually people don't know how much antibody acquisition they have. And then they start, then they, instead of being stage one cancer, they're in stage three or stage four. And they don't have very many choices left. Okay, because the indicators are going to look like flu. They're going to look like a cold. But every single time you suffer from some kind of cold and flu virus, you are steadily breaking your body down, bringing up more antibodies, 
clogging up your system. And then it's systematic degradation. Holy crap, now you get it. I've just simplified everything because I figured out what makes up the human body. I figured out what out there is being used to manage cancer disease and chronic illness. And it's the same thing that makes up the human body, but it's done in different conglomerations. And then somehow people are, I don't say somehow, but people are then applying those remedies and cures in improper ways and their expectation is to stop symptoms is to stagnate the healing process by stopping the symptoms by taking mucinex and theraflu and all of that and then they're creating more antibodies and so and then so you're not and then you know yeah you're maybe releasing through your poop and your pee but remember you still have stagnation in your filtration process so you are still accumulating you're still accumulating more than you're releasing and that's why you see then a steady trigger of the aging process. Holy crap. I'm going to sit on this for a minute and be like, holy crap, we just figured this out. Thank you guys. Bye.